Well, that great funky playing is from the Haas Sisters of the USA, who were international guests at Cresfest in country Victoria in 2023. Welcome to this Cresfest world. My name's Neil Adam. Cresfest is a folk and roots music festival in Creswick near Ballarat, which takes place at the start of April each year. Helping organise Cresfest has led me into all kinds of amazing conversations and experiences, and these podcasts are inspired by them. Today, in episode two, we're going to hear from Simon MacDonald. Simon, in an article published in 1968, was called the best traditional singer ever recorded in Victoria. What a claim. He lived at Springmount near Creswick, and he was first recorded in the American Hotel in town and in a neighbour's kitchen in the 1950s. An LP of his songs was put out in 1961, and copies made their way to Bob Dylan and to Pete Seeger, both of whom had versions of Simon's songs in their repertoire for a time in the early 1960s. But Simon was more than just a singer of his family's old Irish and Scottish songs. He could talk till the cows come home. A Ballarat primary school principal called Hugh Anderson brought his new reel-to-reel recorder to Creswick and over weekends recorded about 30 hours of Simon talking about his life. Hugh's wife Dawn transcribed them and a book called Time Out of Mind was published of these reminiscences and songs. Sadly, Simon died uh, just before his 60th birthday the month that the book was released. The reel-to-reel tapes have been sitting in the National Library of Australia since Hugh's death, and I was lucky enough during lockdown to get access to them. I was also lucky enough to get permission from Hugh's son Warwick and wife Dawn to use these recordings in a show called Everyone Loved Simmy, which we've performed here locally in Creswick. Simon's name is not really much remembered here in town, except by his family and a few locals with long memories. So anything I can do to remind people of his name and its voice, I'm really happy to do. In today's podcast, you're going to hear Hugh interviewing Simi about the start of his life, and then let's hear Simi singing one of his songs. So without further ado, let's wind our brains back to 1967 to listen to Hugh Anderson starting the ball rolling. Hugh Anderson at Creswick. Saturday the 4th of February 1967, recording Simon MacDonald's life story. First episode. Right. Now, how are we going? Good. All right. Right, I'll start my story of where I was born at Springman in a house called Cunnings. And my first memory... Uh, this house was uh, belonged to a publican in Spring Mount who owned the Spring Mount Hotel called Pat O'Brien. And uh, I was born there, according to me father and my mother, on the 22nd of November. And that night there was a terrible thunderstorm and a fall of snow which followed and I was born with white hair and they always reckoned that I was... Uh, the lightning was that bad that night that it turned me hair white <laughs> before I was born. Anyhow, I don't remember living there because I was too small, but we shifted to Spring Man when I was about 18 months old. Pat O'Brien decided to sell this house and pull it down and make a stable for his pub and Spring Mound out of it. They were paying 18 pence a week rent for this house. What did Pat look like? Well, he was just like a moon face. I can show his photo over this pub on the wall now. It's in the, the old-time photo of the spring. What, in the American? Yeah, and the football is on the wall there. Yeah. The old publican. He was about 22 stone weight and about uh, 6 foot 5 in height, I suppose, and a jovial man. Yeah. He was always singing Mother McCree or something. <laughs> And he had an old horse, an old white horse called Masket. And he ran a mail cart to uh, Mullen Gip. That was about 10 miles every day. He had to drive the mail out from Creswick to there. He called it the Spring Mount 
post office, drop the bags there, then he'd go on and way out through Dean and Mullingip. What, he had the mail contract? He had the contract and the horse and cart, an old white horse he called Masket. Well, mm. coming back, the old horse would be that tired, he'd call up at his own pub yeah. and the first thing, give the old horse a pot of beer and he'd bring out a pot to that old horse. i seen it later years when I grew up that he'd bring out the pot of beer and put it out to the horse's lips and the horse would drink down that pot every day that went on. But anyhow, that's the house that uh, my father lived in first when I was born. But he decided then that he had to ship because old Pat was going to pull down the old house and make another stable in the pub yard of Spring Man. So my father decided there had been that many houses and renting around Treswick and that before that he'd build one of his own in the bush. And that was about... Uh, what, he owned the land up there, did he? No, he got land on a, a miner's ride, oh, an yeah, acre yeah, of land. Yeah. And he started to stick up a, a house there for saplings and did a probably two quadrants yeah. and a bark roof which I remember well, because I was 18 months old when they shipped it in. And I don't even remember that till I got this bite of the bull ant on the finger. Well, that's my first memory. Your I first don't, memory was the bull ant bite. I, the other things I've talked about with what they've told me. So, mm. But I remember they being out sitting in the grass behind the, the house that he built, and, and I got a terrible sting in the finger. And I was screaming out there. My mother came out running out, thought I was snake bitten. She seen the little jumping ants get on my finger, and she said, It's only a bull ant bite, it won't hurt you. But I've been allergic to bull ant bites yeah, ever since. Yeah. I do, I get real <laughs> crook with them yeah. now. So uh, that went on, and I described this uh, house because it uh, wasn't much to look at. It was three rooms long. The kitchen was in the middle, there was one bedroom on one end and the other, the other end. One was for the children, the other was for the mother and father. Hey. We all had to sleep in the one bed. Mm. And there must have been about six of us, I think. Like a double bed, would it be? Oh yes, we had the double bed, but yeah. we all got into it somehow. Yeah. But uh, they built a mud chimney, him and my uncle Jack, and this mud and stones Oh, it would be about five foot wide in the bottom. They used to put great billets of wood in. And the winter's night, I was standing the hobs like that each side. It was that big, I'd be standing in the chimney. Sit of outside and... What, the right. they cooked on the open fireplace? Open right? fire cooking, yes. They had the camp oven. Yeah. My mother baked the scones in the camp oven. And... Uh, frying pan or everything, it was all in the big iron pots them days, everything was iron. Yeah. They scrubbed them and washed them, they had everything perfectly clean. Nobody was sick, mm. if anything, not as a person. Mm. You might have been sick once in a year. And every night, my father would come home late, oh, he worked on the gold, the fossicking and that, and he worked till dark practically. Mm. And the, there was 10 o'clock closing, and that's before the 6 o'clock ever yeah, came in. Oh, yeah. And he'd always have to have his beer, of course, after his hard day's work, which I suppose he deserved. Yeah. But this would be in the 90s? Yeah, oh, and in the hundreds, the yeah, first yeah. of the hundreds, yeah. the first uh, of the century. Yeah. Anyhow, uh, he'd always come home with the food, the turkey, as so I. There'd be probably everything had up from the day before because the, the gold was very scarce. You are listening to this Cresfest World and today we're listening to archive footage from the National Library of Australia of Simon MacDonald interviewed in the American Hotel in Creswick in 1967 by Hugh Anderson. Let's go back to more of Simi's tales. This time, hear the story of the dog chasing the sausages up the garden path. And he'd sell his gold down at the bottom pub. That was Mrs. Close. To the, the publican. Monster Arms Hotel. They all had, mostly had gold licenses yeah. them days. Yeah. So anyhow, uh, 
what they weigh up to would they? Or? Oh yes, they had gold skulls and they yeah. used to blow the dust out of it and at the same time they'd blow a lot of gold out of it yeah. as well and they'd sweep that Did up and the 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 Half of the miners was half drunk and they couldn't yeah. see it getting blown away. Yeah. And all that fine gold, they'd sweep it up mm. on the floor in the morning and wash it off yeah. in the dish and they'd get a few more the weight or two of gold. And they'd get their beer there. The old man used to get his snap bottle full of beer for thruppings. Mm. A square how, bottle. How did they pull their beer? What they, what oh, they by handle? the handle. Yeah. They had a handle pump on. Yeah. And it was good beer. They make their own There was beer no gas. They... Uh, the Ballarat Brewery oh, was yeah. making it. Driven out with horse and wagon from Ballarat, yeah. horse and lorry. Yeah. And it was beautiful beer. You could smell it a mile off outside the pub. You didn't have to yeah. win. You could smell beer them days yeah. passing the pub. You can't smell it today yeah. passing the pub. Yeah. Anyhow, uh, uh, when he'd come up home in the night, my father, well, uh, he'd generally go to the butchers. Sometimes he'd have to walk into Crescent from Spring Mount about three miles to get a few pounds of sausages because he knew we'd be all pretty hungry. and. Yeah. And uh, he'd come up there with his square bottle, a gin bottle, a snaps bottle it was really, yeah. a thruppany bottle, that was a, a yeah. drink for him. And he'd be coming up the hill and the dog would go down to meet him and he'd have this string of sausages hanging out behind him. As he come up the hill the dog would be on the last one, you know, <laughs> two and one coming up the hill, we'd be yeah. about to meet him. Look at the dog, it's on the end of the sausages. He'd have two or three pounds of these all beautiful sausages too. Yeah. Old Joe Featherson used to make them down there. He's one of the butchers at the shop, is not even there now, down near the bridge. So when the old dad got home, he'd say, Right, oh, uh, children, I'll put on the pan now and we'll have a feed. And he'd chunk all these sausages. Even if we were in bed, we'd have to get up and have this feed of sausages at ten in the night. Yeah. It might be nine or ten because he wouldn't get yeah. home till late. Because naturally my mother would go through it. Because all he used to do, he'd get down to the pub and as he had his drinks coming home, they'd say, well, Simon, his name was, I was called up. Yeah. Get on the piano. Well, he was a famous man on the piano for playing the ear. What, he'd oh, play in the pub, would he? Or? Yes. Yeah. And He'd amuse them and they, they, he'd play every tune that was going at that, them days, you know. Yeah. And he was virile and uh, versatile on them keys. He, he played in, yeah. you know. He yeah, never learned to go. He learned. His sisters learned, but he oh, never learned yeah. a, a note in his life. Yeah. And he played a violin, which he never never learned any music. Yeah. He never knew one note of music, but he, played he was pretty you. good, yeah. yeah. See what I mean about Simon? He could talk, couldn't he? And the 30 hours of tapes are full of stories telling us so much about country life in the Goldfields area in the first decades of the 20th century, as well as giving us such insight into a world of song. One of Simon's best known songs is a local song called The Cockies of Bungaree. It became really well known from Simon's LP and folk rock bands like the Bushwhackers and Red Gum recorded versions of it in the 1970s, having learnt it from Simon. Bungaree is a small place just down the road from Creswick and in this song, which was recorded in the American Hotel in Creswick in 1959 and was written in about 1850, Simi tells us why we should not go and work for the cockies of Bungaree. Now all you blokes take my advice and do your daily toil But don't go out to Bungaree to work in the chocolate soil For the days they are so long, me boys, they break your heart in two and if ever you work for Cocky Burke, you very soon will know. Oh, we used to go to bed, you know, a little bit after dark. The room we used to sleep in, it was just like Noah's Ark. There were dogs and rats and mice and cats and pigs and poultry. And I'll never forget the time we had while down in Bungaree. Oh, the first be Monday morning, sure to work I had to go. Me noble cocky says to me, get up, you're rather slow. The moon was shining gloriously and the stars were out, you see. And I thought before the sun would rise, 
I'm dying bungaree, so we used to go to bed, you know, a little bit after dark. The room we used to sleep in, it was just like Noah's Ark. There were dogs and rats and mice and cats and pigs and poultry, and I'll never forget the time we had. While out in Bungaree, oh, he called me to me supper at half past eight or nine. He called me to the breakfast before the sun did shine. And after tea was over, or with a merry laugh, the old cock, he says to me, we'll cut a bit of chaff. Now, when you are chaff cutting, boys, isn't it a spell? Yes, be Joe, says I, oh, it isn't, it's me that knows it well. For many of those spells, with me they disagree. For I hate the jolly night work that they do in Bungaree. So we used to go to bed, you know, a little bit after dark. The room we used to sleep in, it was just like Noah's Ark. There was dogs and rats and mice and cats and pigs and poultry. And I'll never forget the time we had while out in Bungaree. Well, I hope you enjoyed this uh, insight into the life and times of Simeon MacDonald of Spring Mount near Creswick. Thanks to the Anderson family for their permission to use uh, the tapes uh, that Hugh recorded in 1967 of uh, himself and Simi. This has been a Cresfest World podcast, episode two. Hope you've enjoyed it. Look forward to seeing you the next time on episode three and beyond. And uh, enjoy the Haas sisters on your way out. See you.